Hi, everybody. Welcome to or welcome back to Fragility Exhibition and Events. I'm Christopher Schutte. I'm the Art Experiential Director and Innovation Director at Particle. Before we start, a very brief introduction of the project. Fragilita is an ongoing exhibition launched by Particle with the gracious support of the Italian Embassy in Kuala Lumpur. Today is actually the second uh, talk, a very conversational talk between uh, very interesting people. So hope you'll enjoy this. Moderated by the Fond uh, Fondazione Ica Milan. Uh, together with Particle, we're actually trying to do a series of events that are bringing, uh, bringing art closer to people. And, and so in this way, live streaming is really a, uh, a great possibility to actually allow people in the audiences to interact with, uh, with artists, with curators. And so this is a great opportunity to uh, connect uh, on Slido. I can flash again the, uh, the code here. You're welcome to come in and interact. The, uh, again, uh, special thanks to Ambassador Maggi Pinto of the Italian Embassy in Kuala Lumpur. We'd like to publicly thank him for his support of this project. And the uh, project itself is ongoing. You're welcome to, to visit www. Uh, uh, sorry, www.particle.art slash fragilita and uh, enjoy the experience. For now, uh, that's all I have uh, on my side. I'm going to turn the word over to Chiara Nuzzi, who is uh, production and uh, going to moderate today. She's production from Fondazione Ica uh, Milano, and she will moderate our discussion and introduce our guests for today. Oh. Thank you, Chris, and uh, thank you, Particle, for inviting the team of uh, Fondazione Ica Milano to join the project and its early stages. So I'm very glad to moderate this uh, uh, second interview. My name is Chiara Nuzzi. I'm a curator and editorial coordinator and a production manager to, at Fondazione Ica Milano. Uh, I'm very happy to welcome today and to um, discuss together with our uh, guests for the second interview and they are uh, Vittorio Calabrese, the director of Magazzino Italian Art and uh, Noor Hanim Khairuddin, former curator with NAG, the National Art Gallery and now general manager of People of Remarkable Talent. So thank you both for being here and um, I have the pleasure to, to make you some questions. Uh, and share with you some reflections about the topic of fragility, which is the, you know, the starting point of the world project. So I would start with the first question and um, you can freely ask, but I would like to, to have a very smooth and free conversation. So uh, don't, don't feel uh, too much pressure about my questions and we will see where, where this discussion will bring us. So I was wondering, um, has there ever been a time in your life when you perceive fragility as a point of strength um, rather than uh, as a form of weakness? Who, who would like to start? I'll go first. Noor, maybe? Okay. Uh, hi, thanks, uh, Chiara, for the question. And thank you to the organizer, firstly, uh, for inviting me. So back to question one, uh, has there ever been a time of your life when you perceive fragility as a point of strength and resilience rather than as a form of weakness? I guess the, uh, the, the nearest um, example is, of course, the pandemic itself, whereby uh, you know, we are being forced to adapt to the new norm. Um, at first, when it happened last year um, in uh, March, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think everyone felt really down, and we were all forced to stay at home for like I think two months. And me being the organizer um, of events, yeah, uh, all sorts of events, music, arts, and of you know culture, um, I felt uh, really insecure at first. So the fragility was already there, and and I also pity our uh, arts community, especially because they cannot, um, you know, get 
their normal income through uh, performances, you know, uh, the uh, musicians in clubs, they cannot perform at all. So all this um, added up to our sort of our own um, brainstorming and uh, roundtable sessions among my uh, colleagues here. And um, we thought that um, this is actually a great way to remind us uh, about unity. And uh, because of the pandemic, because of this uh, COVID-19 thing, everyone got connected uh, instantly. Uh, before this, prior to that, I think um, all of us, you know, there, there are, there are uh, groups here and there doing their own thing. But after this thing happened, and because we are forced to connect only through um, uh, internet, yeah, to Zoom, Skype, and so on, that beca became uh, eventually became the the, the strong point of uh, all this tragedy. So um, uh, we can uh, say that it's, it is a, a form of uh, resilience among the uh, art communities, yeah. Uh, in order to survive this pandemic. So that's the pandemic story, the cliche pandemic story. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Okay. Uh, I want to with audio. Yeah, I think. Uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, uh, over to you, Vittorio. Ah, okay. Oh, great. Uh, I want first. I want to really thank you, Chiara and Particle, uh, Bruno, everyone, the embassy in uh, in Malaysia. I'm actually uh, I'm a big fan of your initiative. I love this uh, topic, and uh, I'm very happy to be here uh, with you today. I'm here uh, in New York, uh, and I after exactly a year of lockdown. So speaking about fragility right now, uh, um, it's pretty uh, special to me also because I have a, a special relationship with it. You know, like I grew up pretty much in a, uh, in a very fragile uh, environment in the sense that my hometown uh, was actually destroyed by a earthquake in 1980. I'm from a region in the South of Italy and I grew up literally on a construction site. So the idea of fragility, uh, for me, uh, growing up, I was born a little bit after uh, the destruction. It's really been part of uh, my upbringing, upbring, uh, upbringing you know, like the idea of grief, community, solidarity. So I did experience, I would say, the positive side that really brought me uh, to the idea of really uh, embracing, uh, especially the idea of community and resilience. So... Uh, of course, what we experienced in the last uh, year, I think accelerated a number of cracks that we saw in the system. I see it here in the in the US, uh, the fragility also of a, of a social state of, um, uh, it's, it's coming to, it's coming to become more and more uh, clear and the pandemic only in a way uh, push forward uh, those, uh, yeah. those issues. And I do feel uh, we took this uh, opportunity this fragility really was turned into a, uh, a possibility for action. And uh, the, what I've seen and uh, here in our community, uh, the, the strong uh, reaction uh, up there in our uh, institutional framework uh, uh, at the museum, at, we are a small uh, um, a museum that is uh, local, we are an hour away uh, from the city, uh, was to really translate most of our programming online and we did it relatively um, soon and also being able to be with you and speak. Uh, we are like in uh, three completely different parts of the world right now. Uh, I think it is a product in a way of this uh, uh, resilience and our capacity to adapt uh, to uh, an environment that is, uh, that is changing. So um, I do see fragility not as a weakness, but I think embracing them is the only way to really get us to uh, that uh, resilient stage and uh, to be also more creative. And I also want to add what Anim was saying about the artist. Our priority number one was looking at this, this, the art system. You know, we often speak about the system of the of the arts. And of course, uh, uh, the artists uh, were the most fragile one. And uh, for us, that became really the priority as soon we decided to close the museums. Like, how do we make sure that we can keep committing to actually like, you know, support our artists and our community. And that's really the beginning of the story. 
Great, thank, thank you, Vittorio. And actually what, what you were saying just uh, bring me directly to the second question I had in mind. So there is a relationship, in your opinion, um, between uh, the perception of one's own fragility and the ability to think and plan for the future. Because in your case, Vittorio, it seems like it is, and it's pretty strong. So maybe directly you want to elaborate a little bit with this, and then Noor can uh, reply. Absolutely. absolutely. Uh uh, the fragility, uh, it is uh, extremely precious when you are able to uh, present it and protect it in, in some ways. You know, like uh, what we what we did, for example, uh, and that's really uh, leading me to, to your projects, uh, uh, we pretty much decided right away to uh, embrace a, a new um, commission to artists as soon as we were as soon as we closed, uh, we realized that uh, the the most precious, I would say, like uh, element in our uh, and fragile in our system was definitely like the work of uh, artists. And this project that I'm going to tell you a little bit about, uh, I want to just give you a little bit. The framework really started from uh, conversations that we were all having. You know, it was exactly a year ago. No one knew how the new normal or how easy we were going to adapt. So we made the strong uh, decision to bet uh, on uh, uh, a future that would be actually possible. So we did commission uh, eight artists um, uh, all living here in uh, New York. Uh, another element of fragility is also the, far, the fact of being away from home, not being able to travel anymore. There's also mm -hmm. that kind of identity that is in a way framed uh, uh, in a more uh, um, straightforward way. I mean, this is the time uh, where we did question pretty much everything. We all in a way, like our conversation with the art with, with the artist early on was like, okay, what's happening now? And there was a lot of anxiety. So from an institution perspective, and that's I think what really brings the strength there, we decided to really create a safe place and a framework for artists to operate. And that was our project named Homemade. We commissioned eight artists, Italian living in New York, to uh, produce works from their home. So it was a little stipend and we did try to uh, build a framework that is not just a, a, a calendar, but it was actually a social framework, a community. And I do think that those two elements of community, but also the responsibility that art institution had during this time to really lead the way uh, and to really embrace that kind of fragility, uh, the element that brought us to realize uh, what I would say, an incredible project. Maria Rapicavoli and Francesco Simedi are part of the project. So, and, uh, so I'm very proud uh, they were they're actually part of uh, Fragili uh, Fragilita, the exhibition uh, that was launched through Particle. Um, but those two elements really uh, made the difference. The idea of community on one end and on the other side, the responsibility that institutions need to have at the time, the leadership. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I strongly agree with, with uh, Victoria's uh, statements. And I think that um, what we are facing now is actually the next step for us to enter into a new di dimension, a new sphere. And we just have to adapt to the to, to this new uh, ways because we will never know when uh, there's going to be more outbreaks later on. And uh, I think um, by going through these challenges, uh, it will trigger us to think about uh, more new possibilities um, in order to channel or make uh, the arts more accessible to a lot of public. Actually, by using this internet, you know, our audience are much, much larger. Um, and, and with the recent um, hype of the uh, NFT, you know, uh, uh, blockchain technology thing. I think although it's going to be a great challenge to uh, the like contemporary artists now, but there must be a way of, um, you know, uh, inform, uh, giving them more information and knowledge about this new technology, because eventually I think we will be, you know, Broke into these um, methods of uh, transaction, cryptocurrency, and so on. Uh, the, I, I am very worried because in my context, uh, in Malaysia, or even uh, specifically in Perak, 
where I live, um, the appreciation of the art is still very low. And people are uh, only starting to uh, look at the conventional uh, works not yet the contemporary, the installation, the performance art. Uh, those are still new to uh, my context over here. So I'm not sure whether they are ready to accept like digital, digital art thing, you know? Uh, but that, that is uh, in a different context. But what I'm saying here is, I think there must be a lot more um, discussions and um, uh, I don't know, like uh, workshops maybe, you know, to, to let people uh, to start engaging more through uh, digitally like this, because it, it is much faster, uh, cheaper, and I think it's the new way of um, getting close to arts. <laughs> So oh, one thing I want to add to what uh, Anim was saying that I think it's truly uh, um, uh, fascinating to me. It just said I do see that this idea of uh, fragility for us the biggest uh, issue. Uh, I mean, I would say no issue challenge. Uh, you know, we are a museum dedicated to Italian art in New York, and uh, mm -hmm. among all the things that would that we did, having an exhibition that was pretty much about fragility, all those artists uh, uh, produced works that in a way reflected their time during the, during the quarantine was really able to touch so many people beyond, I would say, the cultural connotation that maybe we would associate with uh, what's Italian or Malaysian or American. Yeah. I do also feel that uh, uh, this time reconnected us all. Uh, all. Uh, I do mm -hmm. see in that context a lot of uh, museum professionals all came together. We do finally look at collaboration in a, in a much mm -hmm. more um, uh, uh, substantial way. <laughs> uh, but technology, I totally agree with you on that. Yeah. Uh, the scope, uh, in a way, got much larger and uh, mm -hmm. the storytelling it became so important. And, we were, and I think that's where it's going to, well, that's what's going to be challenging and I'm excited that something like Particle came mm -hmm. up with that because of course simply translating art into digital uh, literally uh, maybe doesn't mm -hmm. make sense on it's not effective enough mm -hmm. and thinking about the next generations for example is in your opinion fragility a value that can be thought through education through but also culture through exhibitions maybe what, or, or is it something that is more um, a consequence of the difficult situations that one has to face in, in life, for example, pandemic or others. What's your position about this? I think, um, yeah, of course, we need some kind of fragility and weaknesses, you know, weakness to remind us uh, and to get us out of um, some complacent situation and it can also become a great uh, lesson and uh, you know it can be referred by from one generation to the next so so we we we, we are setting examples of our um, maybe flaws and maybe um, the wrongdoings you know um, so yeah there is sense in um, I mean fragility is important also in life <laughs> you can have like very really perfect all the time you know and there's nothing exciting anymore about life i guess uh, i i agree with uh, i agree with anim uh the um uh, I, I do believe that that's actually uh, that needs to be thought, and I think uh, we do. Uh, we are all responsible for embracing a, a different way. I mean, from uh, uh, my perspective, after four years of uh, aggressiveness and bullying uh, in the political scene in this in this yeah. country, uh, I think we all did see that there's no result in actually not embracing uh, each of our own uh, fragilities. And uh, we think we do need to highlight them. And I think most of those fragilities will be what actually is gonna uh, get us closer to people that really have a different uh, uh, framework uh, that, we, that we do use. So I do wanna believe uh, and I um, that we're moving in that direction. Uh, I do see uh, that 
you know, whatever we're discussing about the global, the digital embraces that kind of idea fully uh, in the sense that there's not going to be uh, necessarily any uh, clash anymore about collaboration and community will become key. And then I do feel that uh, our institution first will be the one to embrace it. And I do agree uh, with a lot of uh, uh, the discussion also on uh, questioning institutions as well and trying to really become more equitable, more community oriented and collaborate among each other, really looking at, at the system. So I do think that we can and also we want to uh, embrace our artists uh, to really experiment with that you know like the the system you yeah. know it's been fragile whatever we call about the new normal yeah. bad normal yeah. before <laughs> so we i hope yeah. we can really uh, embrace its fragility and fix it uh, um, and so. uh, another i think pertinent issue is regarding our environment whereby you know we 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 are facing a really uh, deteriorating uh, Mother Earth. <laughs> so I think by using art as a medium or tool to um, create awareness among um, our younger generation uh, and community, I think this this uh, fragility can be, you know, uh, can be uh, emphasized, you know, uh, through works of art by the arts community. Yeah. And um, I have one last question regarding your own uh, work in practice. So I was wondering, both of you uh, are, of course, involved in the creation of projects, of cultural projects, of exhibition, but not only, also other format. But uh, um, in which way does uh, curating or the, the exhibition process entail the concept uh, of the value of uh, fragility? according to your own experience and practice? Victoria? Oh, I'll go ahead. Yes, the, the, um, uh, this year has all been about that. So I yeah. am very proud of, uh, of uh, what we were able to uh, achieve in that sense. Uh, we did acknowledge some of the limitations and we reacted to it. We really turned this into an opportunity for us and for collaborators and, uh, of course, uh, uh, the artists. Uh, our project, uh, Homemade, uh, yeah. that involved uh, those eight artists in, uh, in an ex in, uh, in, it was more of a curatorial project that was a way for us to uh, reflect on the idea of community and resilience, really turn into a, an exhibition and uh, a catalogue. And uh, I do see that the work that was produced during that time will resonate for for a long time. I mean, for us, um, you know, we're a young organization. We're four years old. It was also a way to really reflect on what community is and what, uh, uh, what that means uh, for an institution to really... Uh, embrace uh, community uh, at uh, at the local and uh, at the national at an international level. So I would say this really experience really changed the way we're looking at it. We're looking at uh, mm -hmm. uh, different uh, echoes, uh, different uh, um, frameworks, and uh, uh, we do feel that we we should experiment with it. I mean, anything that happened up to now, uh, well, let's say a year ago. Uh, in a way was uh, not risky enough, was not really embracing uh, our own fragilities. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, what does the art, is, art do? It needs to push. It needs to push push system. I mean, we do have a, uh, our collection is based on the Arte Povera um, a period. So it's art made during the late 60s and was an art of reaction. It was already some of the, uh, some of the uh, in, um, investigations in global, in language, the global perspective was there and I do see uh, that we do need to relaunch uh, and uh, in, uh, in order to enable artists to, to really embrace their fragilities I do feel we need to uh, create the framework and the community. I do want to um, uh, state our investment in uh, our own local community which starts in our little uh, town in Cold Spring but it really gets to uh, Milan and Malaysia I hope uh, uh, and all of that so um, I do think there's no way back and uh, we did uh, embrace our own vulnerabilities and uh, I do think that uh, that's the strongest we we will we we were ever uh, and we will 
hopefully not the strongest we'll ever be, but I do see a path there. Great, thank you. Okay, I think I'll sit by Victoria already. <laughs> uh, but on my side, I think another thing that we should uh, focus on is probably about our um, archiving um, ventures. Uh, when I uh, once curated a, a show by a, um, a retrospective uh, exhibition uh, of uh, a Malaysian artist, it was really difficult for me to find um, materials uh, and uh, information just because um, I guess uh, during that period in the 80s, 70s, there was still no culture of, um, uh, you know, to promote uh, documentation and uh, archiving among our arts practitioners. So I think that is, is another fragile structure that we, we should start uh, mending from now in order for, for the information to survive. And everything I think by now uh, should be uh, digitized and we should be um, maximizing and utilizing uh, whatever technology there is uh, now to um, to expand our knowledge on um, you know all, uh, on our uh, arts not <laughs> if not in Malaysia um, abroad um, yeah I think uh, that is another um, another important. Um, uh, how can it, issue lah, issue uh, that that we should focus on about documentation and archiving. I fully agree. <coughs> I fully agree. Thank, thank you both for uh, this inspiring conversation. It, to me, as a curator, but also as a cultural worker, it, it has been really uh, interesting to confront and to face with uh, such different. Um, not really perspective because I think and I feel that our perspective are common but you know condi the condition we work and we operate into are, are of course different so thank you once again and let's thank see you. if there are some some questions from the public we have like two minutes left for maybe one question I don't know if there there is some Maybe I can check. Okay, we have one. So I'm I'm reading straightforward. So would you say that the process of digitalization of the art world triggered by COVID has been interiorized by the industry and it will be maintained? Oh. <laughs> Uh, I don't think you can stop uh, this process anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I, at the same time, uh, I think we do need to refine it, uh, and we do need to really uh, look at uh, digitaliz digitalization in a in a more uh, technical, uh, but but also substantial way. In the sense that I do think uh, we are at the very early stage of sophistication, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I think it. Mm, of course, the investments uh, in that are pretty uh, are needed and they're costly. So I do see the issue there, especially for smaller organizations to really mm -hmm. be able to uh, maintain and upgrade. And also uh, because the speed uh, of, uh, you know, things get obsolete very quickly. But I, at least I and I, I also want to comment on what Anim say the Besides the digital, the, the digitalization is the approach of archiving and and pretty much like giving uh, importance to how you actually document things uh, yeah. will be. Uh, I I do see those two things in a little bit of a separate way because of course the investment on the digital needs to be and the knowledge we don't know uh, exactly. personally this is not my uh, area so I would be able to get <laughs> and, uh, right. Uh, so uh, the problem is the problem is that we we need to look at the frontier, and I do hope uh, we will all be able to be more educated in a way to that. But that's on my point. Thank you. And we have a very last question. Um, what is the most risky project you will attempt in the coming year, if there is one? Hmm. 
maybe Hanim, you, you have some project. A risky project. Yeah. <laughs> Risky project, I guess, to do a physical exhibition. <laughs> <laughs> That's risky enough. It's really bored. I, I get so frustrated because I don't really enjoy looking at exhibitions on the screen. Yeah. You see, because and now it's so so limited. I mean, the galleries are still operating, but we no longer have the you know socializing, going to the openings and and whatnot. So I guess the next, I think I'm looking forward to organize big festivals again. <laughs> I will be there, Anim. Uh, yes, please come over well. to Perak. Me too. Yeah? Me too. Yeah, please, please. Well, good, good luck to all of us. <laughs> okay, Mitari, do you have? Uh, I have a risky, well, I think it's tricky to speak about risky mm -hmm. uh, during this time. Of course, anything we will do will be safe uh, in, in, the, in the sanitary like uh, yeah. uh, way. But uh, I'm working on a project that would really that will bring an Italian artist here and who will drive a car from like state to state. And I okay. do hope we can really do that. It will do a drive, so more something more performative. I mean, that's something that we yes. do yes. besides the. Uh, the concept of the physical exhibition there will be something that will activate spaces and there will just be uh action so that's something mm. i i would say i i would hope uh, uh and i'm attempting to do it challenging for sure yeah <laughs> okay so i would like to thank you once again vittoria and hanim for this uh, beautiful conversation and thanks to particle and fondazione ica so we can conclude here our conversation and uh, hope to see you physically somewhere yes. soon. <laughs> yes. Thank Keep you. Keep in touch. Keep in touch. Thank, Thank, you, you. Thank you once again. Bye. Thank you both. Thank, Thank you, you, Christopher. And please do, uh, visit the exhibition and leave your comments, ask the audience <laughs> to interact, leave your audio files. There's a lot of things you can do in the upcoming yeah. weeks. The, the exhibition will be live for at least the next two or three weeks. So. Thank you so much for your thoughts on fragility, though. It was uh, invaluable. So thank you. Thank you so much.